Howdy, folks. Good morning to the East Coasters. Good afternoon to the APAC region, or good evening. Really early for the West Coasters. We're just waiting for the founders to hop on the call. Good morning, Stephen. GM. Did you get some rest? I did get some rest, yes. I'm ready to go and talk about Orbit. Super excited, actually. Same here, same here. Ed was having a, seemed like trouble connecting. Ah, okay. Oh, he's up here now. GM, Ed. GM, how are you? Fantastic. Rested. Love it. More rested. Still have a ways to go. All right, here comes Harry. Hey. Hello. I got nine hours of sleep last night. It was amazing. That's too much. That's going to throw you off. It was on top of two hours of sleep the night before. So the average is still decent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Better than usual. (laughs) So we got everybody here. The founders themselves. Hello, Arbonauts and Web3 community. So today we're going to be talking with the founders about Arbitrum Orbit. Uh, You may have read about it briefly in the docs on Medium, but we're here to dive a little bit deeper into it and what that looks like. But as usual, would love to start with some introductions. And for those who don't know the story, this might be a good chance to explain how Offchain Labs and Arbitrum came to be. I'm sure you love telling the story. <laughs> I guess it goes back further. So, Ed, why don't you start? Let's give the earliest day of the arbitrary story. Yeah. Yeah. So the story goes back to 2014. I was a professor at Princeton then, and we held a conference about blockchain technologies. It was one of the really early technical conferences on that topic. And I got super excited at that about smart contracts, even though there weren't any smart contract based chains yet. It was clear that smart contracts and smart contract based chains were going to be a big deal, but it was also clear that scaling was going to be a problem. And so we started thinking about how to, how could you scale these systems so that they, you could get more throughput than you would get by doing it the obvious way. And that's what led to the original conception of Arbitrum back in early 2014. From there, it was a sort of long and winding path to forward. In the fall of 2014, a group of Princeton undergraduates built a very early version of Arbitrum as a course project that, that I supervised. Then it sat on the shelf for a while until one day in early 2017, when these two PhD students called the Harry and Steven came into my office and said, hey, remember that Arbitrum thing that you were working on back before you went off and did other stuff? Because I had gone off to work at the White House for a couple of years. Anyway, I came back and Harry and Stephen came into my office one day and said, let's work on Arbitrum again. And so we picked it up and started to really flesh it out and try to get closer to complete design. So that we ended up publishing an academic paper about Arbitrum in the summer of 2018. At that point, we realized we, we knew or thought we knew how to build a product that would actually solve a need in the market that we saw developing, namely the high price of gas on Ethereum. And so we started working at that point. We started the company in early 2019 and really built from there. It took a long time of figuring out, improving and improving and building and talking to people about what they needed. But eventually we were able to release the first version of Arbitrum in August of 2021. And then from there, the rest is history. So whenever I hear you mention the White House, I always want to dig deeper, but we'll save that for a very special AMA with just you. White House AMA, oh, a different type of governance AMA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, lots of lessons there. That would be a fun conversation, but yeah, it's not this conversation. No. So what are, what are some of the main events, I guess, since meeting, meeting with Stephen and Harry and working on this together with other engineers, what would you say are a lot of the key milestones that have occurred up until now? And I think the first, the first obvious milestone was the launch of Arbitrum 1, which was in the end of August of 2021. That was our first mainnet chain. It was the first roll-up chain that had, that had fully working fraud proofs, and it was I think it, it, it was, I think, an excellent system for its time, 
But even at that time, we knew that there were things that we wanted to improve. And not, during this time, we were also building our team. I think at the time we released Arbitrum 1 initially, we had about 15 people on the team. Steven, you could probably correct me if I got that a little bit wrong, but I think it's, that's all. I think like 12. 12, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very small team. Yeah. And we, as Arbitrum 1 started to get usage, got popular, we were growing the team. And not that, not long after we started the Nitro project and that led to the Arbitrum Nitro upgrade, which happened on the first anniversary of the, of the Arbitrum 1 launch. Also around that time was the launch of Arbitrum Nova based on our AnyTrust technology, which has a slightly different security assumption, but as, and as a result, much lower cost than, than, than the regular Arbitrum 1. And we'll, we're going to come back to that AnyTrust technology later because it's really important for L3s, I think. Anyway, so, right, so summer of 2022, we launched Arbitrum Nova. We upgraded Arbitrum 1 to Nitro. That was a huge process that was like launching a moonshot. The, but it went very smoothly. We were able to do a smooth transition to Arbitrum Nitro. And so that happened back in the end of last August. And then, of course, since then, the, the biggest story for Arbitrum, obviously, was is the, the launch of community governance, which, which we just announced yesterday. That's really, arguably, the biggest milestone in this whole history. Yeah, because because everything leading up to this, while those are all like incredible tech, technology advancements in the chain, the whole purpose was to reach this point of community governance, and here we are today. Exactly. Yeah, and we've been thinking about this moment and thinking about this goal of getting to community governance and the path to full decentralization for a long time, and really from the very beginning of Arbitrum, it's been part of the design philosophy that we are designing for a fully decentralized system and we want to build the security that we need for that from for that in from the beginning and be super careful in evolving the technical design to make sure that we weren't doing anything that would make full decentralization really difficult and i think that investment and that early thinking has paid off so far that's how we've gotten to where we are basically by having full decentralization as a North Star that we were navigating toward all along. Yeah, and one of, the, one of the things I loved when I first read about Arbitrum way back, listened to some of your panels, was the, the idea of, of focusing mainly on security and setting up those guardrails with the intention to get here. And it's great that you took your time with it. It had to be done, and we finally got to do it. So that's amazing. Congratulations to everyone. It's, a, it's huge and really relied on incredible effort and really amazing performance across the world. The, some of us are out here doing AMAs and so on, but there's a huge team of people and you can look across the board at a lot of the things that have gone into this decentralization, whether it's the, the quality of the docs or having fully and having fully implemented on-chain governance and, and so on. There's just a tremendous amount of moving parts, even beyond the sort of basic technology to operate the Arbitrum chain. The decentralization process was a huge effort across our whole team. And really, we couldn't be prouder of what the team has been able to do to make that happen and happen as smoothly as it has so far. Yeah, it's quite an incredible feat. And I think it'll be a pretty big moment in, in history for L2s and for Ethereum as well. So we're here. Absolutely. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Steven. Yes. I'll go for it. I'm just, yeah, agreeing. And it's, yeah, it's exciting. I know it's not the topic of today's call, but of today's space, but the exciting moment for Ethereum is the realization of the roll-up centric roadmap. Like Arbitrum is now has meet, meets the second stage of Italic's three-stage schema for decentralization. Arbitrum is the only EVM roll-up that meets that stage. And one thing that we talk a lot about our technology being built out, our fraud proofs being built out. I think one one part of the story that, that also equally important is the new technology we launched yesterday is the governance technology. And we, I believe, are the first roll-up or the first EVM roll-up, certainly, to actually have on-chain self-executing governance. And what that means is if you are, there is a vote on-chain and that vote actually has the ability to control the DAO, to upgrade the chain. There's no middle intermediary. Sometimes governance systems will have, there's a vote on-chain and then there's a multi-sig and there's nothing actually gluing these things together. In our case, there is no middleman here. 
the vote on chain actually has the governance power. The DAO really controls the future of the chain. And that is incredibly ex- exciting for me and another a big piece of technology that we, this is not just though, hey, we took a to- there's a token and the Arbitrum Foundation launched a token. This is the Arbitrum Foundation launched a token, but also the governance system that actually empowers that token. And there's a ton of engineering work that went into that as well. And all was dropped yesterday and dropped on chain yesterday as well. Yeah. All, all completely deployed in, deployed in one day, starting in the morning and done by yesterday evening. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> I could hear the terror in your voice. Here. <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> it really went as smoothly as something like this could. And that just reflects the best engineering looks, produces things that look easy, but <laughs> this was not easy. Yeah, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the early team was just mostly composed of engineers for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, certainly it's true and almost entirely engineers but, and that made a lot of sense, right? We were figuring out what we needed to do because early on the technology was evolving quickly and there was a whole set of technical problems we needed to solve in order to be able to even have an EVM compatible chain at all. And it took us some time to, to do that. But once, we, once the technology was there and was ready, then we really started ramping up the other, the community and partnerships and strategy part of our team, ramped up operations and grew the engineering team. So there came a moment when it made sense to really accelerate. Yeah. The Arbitrum ecosystem has always been tech first and the development of the initial development team and off-chain labs went that direction as well. And basically, initially it was just technical people. And it got to a point where we had built something that people actually wanted to use. And that drove the need for the partnership team. And then at some point there was a need to market this. And actually the first marketing hire in the Arbitrum ecosystem was only brought on maybe six or eight months ago. Really everything's always been driven from the tech and the community and building organically from there rather than trying to market something that didn't exist and putting that first for us. The tech has always led, and as we go into this new phase now, where the Arbitrum Foundation takes over control, one thing that exists and puts these values, sets them in stone, if you haven't looked at the Constitution yet, at the very end, there's a set of values there that really tries to enshrine the importance of Ethereum aligned, the technology first, security first mindset, and this is no longer in our control, but as we set off this uh, this ecosystem to fly in its own, those are the the core values that have always driven it, even though they hadn't yet been properly expressed or formally expressed. And our expectation is as the Arbitrum DAO and Arbitrum Foundation take control of the ecosystem, those core values will remain and the security first and technology first will drive every decision, ideally, that the DAO makes. Yeah, I hope the, the approach that was taken with Arbitrum inspires a lot of builders of the future for Web3 to focus on the tech and focus on building things up. And then realizing people will want to use it and then going into pushing for the marketing side of it. Because that that seemed to have worked quite well. (laughs) Absolutely. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of today's AMA, which people know as now Arbitrum Orbit. So first of all, why now announce it and what is Arbitrum Orbit? Great question. So one question which I got from a few different people was, why would you announce Arbitrum Orbit on the same day that the Arbitrum Foundation, like why the Arbitrum Foundation announced Orbit on the same day? Why would, why isn't there daylight or it seems like it's a wasted media opportunity? Why don't they announce that in a few weeks? And the answer is, while there are two different announcements, they're really part of the same announcement because the underlying piece here is community control and community governance and community ownership. And that's everything that, that happened yesterday with the DAO, with the formation of the DAO and the launch of the token that actually put the governance in the hands of the community. And part of that is that so there's the Arbitrum chains, and that's Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova currently. There's the Arbitrum ecosystem and fostering and continuing to foster and grow that ecosystem. But there's also the Arbitrum technology. That's the underlying technology that powers these chains. And the question is, what is that about the future of the Arbitrum technology? How easy will it be for others to build on this technology? Will it even be possible for others to say, hey, we want to build an Arbitrum chain? And... What Arbitrum Orbit does, two things. It makes it easy and permissionless and open, completely open for anyone to build a layer three chain that settles on top of one of the Arbitrum L2s. So you can build a layer three chain on top of Arbitrum 1 and Nova, and you can go ahead and take the code and do that right now. 
You can modify the code, customize the code to whatever you know needs you want. I encourage people to be careful about it and make sure that the code is secure and audited before they put it out. But the idea is the code is not restricted at all if you want to launch a layer three chain that, that settles at Arbitrum. And we think that we'll build the community, will not only become a community of, you know, it's already the number one layer two scaling community, but it will also be a community where people can launch application chains, which is something which I'm sure we'll get into soon of why people are doing this and why they want to. But that tool is now in the hands of developers. And in particular, the best scaling technology, which is the Arbitrum Nitro stack, is now available. And this includes both the roll-up, the roll-up form of Arbitrum, as well as the AnyTrust chains. These are all available for L3s, completely open, completely permissionless, as long as they're L3s on top of Arbitrum. And then there are other questions like, hey, maybe someone wants to launch a competing layer two. Is that something which should be licensed? Should they have the ability to launch a layer two that's not in the Arbitrum ecosystem, is built on Ethereum? And what the announcement does yesterday, it says, I might have opinions. You, Eli, might have an opinion. Other people might have opinions. And our opinions might differ, right? So, you know, I can, you, one, some people might argue it should be open and anyone can build a layer two, even if it competes with Arbitrum. Others might argue, no, why don't we, uh, why does an Arbitrum Foundation keep the tech for itself and not hand it to other L2 chains? And the idea is that's the best, the best way to resolve these. There are different opinions. There are diversity of opinions. Put this, this power in the hands of the community. The community has the decision-making power to grant additional layer two licenses of Ethereum as well. And again, just to sum up, layer three chains, open, permissionless, anyone can do. Layer two chains, anyone can go to the DAO and ask for permission and say, hey, we want to launch a layer two chain, or maybe a, maybe another ecosystem project or a DeFi project, or it could be a centralized exchange that wants to go ahead and launch their own chain. All they need to do is go to the DAO and make their case of why the DAO should allow them to do that. And then the DAO, it's in the hands of the community. And there will, of course, be a difference of opinions. And our, our only hope is that those differences of opinions will be expressed, that people will actually vote either via direct voting or via delegation and we have community participation here and that's in our opinion the best result here where the community should be in control of not only the chains and their direction not only the ecosystem in its direction but also the technology and its direction the community as one of the license as one of the licensors has the ability to grant additional licenses for other l2 chains as well one of the questions that like came up a bunch yesterday once the documents went live and the announcement happened around it people were like what the heck is an l3 so maybe you can just dive into maybe the fundamentals of, of what that actually means for building a, a chain on top of l2 sure yeah um, you want to you want to take this here sure yeah i'll grab it yeah yeah so Fundamentally, and this is one of the one of the things about the Arbitrum technology and roll-up technology from the beginning has been that it's relatively general over what it's building on top of. Arbitrum chains, L, Arbitrum chains as L2 chains are deploying a smart contract on Ethereum that then secures a chain that is hosted above it. Arbitrum chains as L3 chains would be deploying very similar contracts to the L2 chain in order to create an L3 chain above it. And these things can layer. There, there's certainly, a, there's a wide array of kind of questions as to what does the same thing, does the same exact contracts make sense as for kind of for an L2 construction and L3 construction? Are there kind of differences in optimizations and interesting patterns that could be used when building an L3 that sort of aren't available for L2s or don't make sense there? That's one of the one of the really cool things with Orbit is now kind of engineers anywhere can now explore this space themselves since the code base is available to be freely modified for the purposes of L3s. Fundamentally, why would you want to have a separate chain at all? Why not just do everything on Arbitrum 1? What does an L3 provide? The kind of core, I would say two biggest things that you get from having your own chain. One is capacity. You have, Arbitrum 1 has a gas limit. Arbitrum 1 has around 7 million gas per second that are available for computation and storage. If you have your own L3 chain, you can have your own 7 million gas per second or however that chain is configured, it would be up to the deployer, which is a really big in capacity, obviously. The other is customization. If you are writing the rules for that L3, you could just have it be a standard EVM chain, or you could modify it however you want with whatever sort of application specific modifications would enable what you want to build. And that's an area where the sky is the limit. Yep. So not, not only do you have the ability to make customizations for your own chain, but one of the big advantages of launching an L3 overdoing 
your own L2, is that you get to build on top of Arbitrum instead of building on top of Ethereum. And Ethereum is great, but for many purposes, Arbitrum offers some really big advantages as a base layer to build on. One of them is obviously that there's more capacity on Arbitrum itself and, and lower cost. And because a big portion of the cost of running a upper layer chain is the resources that you're using at the lower layer, having that lower layer be cheaper and have more capacity means that the cost of operating your chain is going to be lower, even if you don't want to customize anything. But the other thing is that Arbitrum is building out a, and the Arbitrum community is going to continue to build nalities that are not available on Ethereum. So one of the huge examples here is the stylus technology, which will be available on Arbitrum 1, which will let you write the base layer code that sort of is the anchor or, fu- or foundation of an L3. It'll let you write that in, in a different programming language, Rust or C++ as you prefer but also be able to get the potentially quite large performance advantages and cost advantages of using stylus as opposed to to writing in Solidity. So even if you don't want to do a ton of customization, there's still real advantages to building an L3 on top of Arbitrum because just because Arbitrum is a cheaper and more flexible base layer. So can people modify the, the code from Arbitrum when they're building out these layer threes as well, with even the layer twos? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you can modify, you can customize, you can improve for the purpose of building and deploying L3s on top of Arbitrum. People can absolutely do that. And I think I would really expect a an active community of people who are doing that, who are talking about how to do it, figuring out what are the best customizations and improvements. And it's people absolutely can do that. They, you don't need permission from anybody. That's one of the things that is that is built into the structure of Orbit, that people have the freedom to do those customizations and share them for, for building L3s on top of Arbitrum. The only caveat I would give, and this is not a real caveat, but is I would certainly to anybody doing this, and I hope there are tons and tons of people doing this, I would definitely recommend caution because building an L2 is not simple. Building an L3 is not simple. Building systems that are safe and secure and work as expected is definitely a complex thing. <laughs> it's definitely an area that, that I think we should see a lot of experimentation, but, al- but also hopefully caution. <laughs> oh, yeah. I imagine when these proposals hit the governance forums, it's going to be quite s- some complex documents. This won't even... this. So for layer twos, there's a requirement that if you want to have your own layer two, it has to apply to apply through the governance system. But with the kind of announcement yesterday, for layer threes, there's no application needed at all. In order to deploy a layer three chain on top of Arbitrum 1, it's entirely permissionless. You could just do that tomorrow without talking to anybody, which is wild. All right, I have a lot of work to do. I'm going to go build one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what like cases do you imagine people needing to build out a layer three or even another layer two instead of just deploying on Arbitrum 1 or Nova? For conversations with developers over the course of many months, there are some themes that I've seen where certain teams are interested in having their own chains, their own layer threes in particular. But here's what I would say. I would break them down into probably three categories. There are teams that are most wildly successful. And they say, we want our own priority laid on, on, on Ethereum. That's what we want. We don't want to share a chain and share capacity with other projects. And as an example, and this is just an example from the public sphere, not one that I'm saying that anything's going on with Arbitrum, but like Yuga Labs, when they did their other side launch, there was just a ton of congestion on chain. And immediately people were saying, and there was a lot of discussion in the forums of, hey, you guys should launch their own chain. But people don't want to launch their own layer one chain off and they want to be on Ethereum. They want to get the security of Ethereum. And that is, I think, really what, what the Arbitrum Orbit chains do. They allow people to have their own dedicated capacity reserved reserve lane on a reserved priority lane on Ethereum. And when you talk about customizations, you can do this in a few ways, right? A chain, a successful project can build their own chain that's completely open. It's just additional capacity. Because one of the cool things is all, every L3 chain has the same capacity as the Arbitrum Layer 2s itself. It's the same technology, has the same capacity. So if Arbitrum 1 has 10x capacity of Ethereum, your layer three chain will have the same capacity. So it really increases capacity significantly while only putting a relatively small additional load on the underlying chain. So it really does, it's a multiplying effect. So a a project that just say, hey, we're just increasing capacity. We're going to have our own chain. It could be a completely open chain where anyone else can build. 
um, and they're you know, just branded and, and its purpose and, it, and its focus is for this project. Additionally, though, the project can make other customizations. A project can decide, hey, we're going to actually lock down contract deployment. We're going to have an application-specific chain that only allows our or whatever this project's contracts are. That's something they can do as well. And the cool thing is, even though it's locked down and doesn't have permissionless contract deployment, that doesn't mean it's not secured by Ethereum. It's just an application-specific chain that can be secured by Ethereum. So that's one of the other things that projects can do. So that's all Category 1, these projects that are very successful and want to launch their own chain because they have that capacity today and they have already significant market share. Number two are projects that have the vision to get there, but they don't haven't gotten there yet. So a lot of the conversations we've had are projects that, okay, I don't need my own Arbitrum chain today. I'm going to start off in Arbitrum 1 or Arbitrum Nova, but they like to know that there's some growth path that, but if they're wildly successful, there's an easy path to within the Arbitrum ecosystem, build their own chain and migrate there very easily. So that's another category. Number two, just people who want to know that's in their back pocket. A weird analogy for this is like fraud proofs, which you don't uh, tend to use it anytime soon, but you want to know that it's there. Uh, maybe that's a stretch analogy, but the idea is these are just people who want to have that back card. And know the, the launch of the Arbitrum Orbit L3 permissionless and open license means that they know they have that option. That option is there and they don't know they don't have to get anyone's permission. They don't have to go to the DAO. They don't have to go to any centralized company or party or even decentralized. They know that they can on their own control their own destiny and launch a layer three chain on Arbitrum if and when it becomes necessary. And the third one, and there's some mix between the three, but the third one is there are projects that want to make their own uh, token or their own brand just central to, to their chain. So a lot of projects, for example, would want to potentially launch a layer three chain, maybe an any trust chain that has their token as the fee token. And one thing to clarify here is that the constitution makes it clear that Arbitrum is Ethereum aligned and the Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova chains, even though the Arbitrum Foundation announced the token yesterday, the fee token has not changed. So for the governed chains, the fee token remains ETH and that's the in, in line with the constitution's values of being ETH aligned. However, Another project launching in all three might not have the same considerations as the Arbitrum Foundation, the Arbitrum DAO, and it might say, hey, we want to launch a layer three and our token or their token is what I mean, is the fee token of that chain. And that's also absolutely a chain that a change that people can make. So fundamentally, those are the three different types of projects that I would say really you know, that we've seen. Again, there's overlap. There are projects that are successful and might want their own token to be part of it as well. But those are some three different categories. And one thing I just to add to this is. It might seem like to those listening, wow, we should all just build layer threes. Like what are smart contracts? What are applications? Why do we need any of this? And I would caution people. And I think layer threes are the right move for some people, but layer twos are, and building on the public layer twos are really good moves for many projects as well. And it really depends. And I'll give you a flavor of that. Some of the things I think people underrate is infrastructure. Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova have fantastic infrastructure on their chain. That includes block explorers built by the Etherscan team. That includes node services like Alchemy, Infura, QuickNode. That includes oracles like Chainlink. And that includes really a whole host of public infrastructure that's available on these chains, like to, tools like Dune Analytics and Nansen. Really a fantastic ecosystem of tooling. And replicating these projects, are, these infrastructure providers won't have the capacity to support hundreds or thousands of chains. It just won't happen. So products need to think about, do I want this? A, do I need this infrastructure? And B, am I large enough? Am I important enough that these infrastructure providers will build on my chain? That's one important consideration. Number two is just synchronous composability. There are, and I'm sure we'll talk about on this on this space, things that, that Arbitrum Orbit can do that allow layer three chains in the future to um, communicate better and more and more easily and more seamlessly than completely distinct blockchains. There are benefits that, that are tech, tech, technological advances that and technological directions that will enable that. But fundamentally, they're not on the same chain. And a project might say, hey, I want to be on Arbitrum 1 because I want to be on the same chain as, say, Uniswap. I want to be co-located with GMX. I want to be on the chain with this liquidity. So there are definitely holes to be on the same chain. But for other projects, they might say, hey, we're just an island. I Maybe I'm a game that doesn't need any interaction at all. And that's okay. So it really is project dependent. So there's no like silver bullet here or clear winner where it's, oh, layer three chains are better for everyone. No, it's really a consideration of what is your project? Who do you need to be with? What infrastructure provider do you need? How successful or how much on-chain volume do you intend to use? And these are all a basket of considerations that go into effect when people need to decide, should I be building a layer two application? Should I be building my own layer three chain? Should I be building a layer, starting a layer two and have growth plans to if and when certain metrics get hit to move to a layer three? These are all possibilities. But the cool thing is 
we're putting and the foundation with this announcement of Arbitrum Orbit is putting the tools in the hands of developers that they can make these decisions. They can analyze their own needs. They can analyze their own business goals and make the decision to launch their own layer three with the best technology available. And that is the Arbitrum technology stack. They can make their decision to launch a roll up, to launch an antitrust chain as layer three. They can make their decision to launch on the Arbitrum public chains. And these are tools that are now in the hands of developers and they don't need anybody's permission to use them. It may not always be, they'll have a decision to make, they'll have to consider their own circumstances of which one they want to use, but they'll all be available to them, which is, I think, the most exciting thing about the Arbitrum Orbit announcement. Let me jump in and talk about one more use case. As a research guy, I'm actually really excited about what people will be able to do with L3 chains via Orbit in terms of research. So if you have some great idea about how Arbitrum or Ethereum might be different, maybe you have some great new pre-compile or some changes in the instruction set or some new set of functionality you want to try out, Orbit is great for that because you can spin up an L3 chain easily. You can modify it because Orbit gives you the right to modify the Nitro stack of Arbitrum, which is built on Geth. You can just go in there and say, what if we add an instruction? What if we add a pre-compile? What if we change something about how Ethereum works. Let's make a chain, which is completely Ethereum compatible and cheap to operate, that has that feature I want to try out. And uh, you can do that permissionlessly and on by using Orbit. And I'm actually really excited about what the community is going to be able to do in that research direction, in addition to everything that Stephen talked about. So like the first thing that comes to mind when you're mentioning all these different types of protocols that that might want to make an L3 chain. First of all, I think of a lot of specific protocols. I won't name any, but I'm curious if they launch an L3 chain, let's say they're a protocol that has projects building under their umbrella of liquidity. Let's say synthetics, for example, if they built an L3 chain, would all the protocols in their like liquidity umbrella be able to deploy on their L3 chain? Does it work that way? Or is it more so the dApps themselves just operate their protocol as an L3? Really, that's like the sky's the limit here. And they can, that's the question of customization. You can launch an L3 chain that has the exact same permissions and the exact same features as the Arbitrum public chains, like Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova that have open and permissionless deployments and their entire ecosystem can deploy. But you can also launch an L3 chain that says, hey, only these keys or these particular addresses can deploy contracts. So it's really, again, another tool that's completely in the hands of these developers to decide how open or not open they would want to make their L3 chains. The technology is there for them to make these choices, but both of these are possibilities. That's really interesting. If they use Ethereum as the the way to transact with gas, does that mean that consensus and what is true resolves on Ethereum, therefore being secured by Ethereum, like Arbitrum 1 and Nova? Yeah, Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova have their security anchored in Ethereum. And a big part of what the a big part of what is great about Arbitrum right now is how solid that security is and the work that's being done to improve it. And so if you build a layer three on top of Arbitrum 1, you are Arbitrum 1 has a security foundation in Ethereum, and your layer three has a security foundation in Arbitrum 1. And so that sort of linkage of security bases itself all the way down into Ethereum. So yeah, so you get to benefit from the decentralized security of Ethereum by building on by building a layer three this way. Of course, anyone can go off and make their own layer one chain, but you don't get the security that you would get by building within the Ethereum based stack. So yeah, you get it and you you get it and you don't have to do any extra special work in order to get that security anchor because Orbit-based chains will have that out of the box. And are there projects already that are looking to build an Orbit chain? And can you even, can you talk about any of them already? So yes and no. There are projects that we're aware of that have told us about their intentions to build an orbit chain. And my understanding in the next week or two, the first one of these that I know about will make their plans public, although I'm not in a position to say that today. But the cool thing is that announcement may very well get front run because you don't have to tell me 
You don't have to tell off chain labs. You don't have to tell the Arbitrum Foundation if you want to do this. So I would not be surprised if before any announcement that I know of goes out that someone else will build the layer three chain and someone else will announce their plans that, hey, we're building an Arbitrum Orbit chain because that's the nice nature of it being permissionless. So yes, I am aware of some plans of, uh, of projects to do this, that some announcements that are queued up for the next couple of weeks. But I, I'm sure that there's a lot going on now that by the nature of the technology being open and permissionless to launch layer three chains that we will learn just with the rest of the world. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of experimentation as, as well. I feel like knowing the crypto space, there was probably like at least a couple hundred people that just stayed up all night last night hacking on weird <laughs> forks of the Nitro code base. Such is the space we're in. So you were mentioning also Stylus being deployable or usable oh, Sorry, on, on L3s. My assumption also is that it's usable for Trim products as well, the Arbitrum 1 and Nova ecosystem. So that will be a DAO decision. The technology is mature and will be available later this year, but it will be up to the DAO to decide, hey, does the DAO, does the community want to take this available technology and launch it in the Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Nova chains? I personally think it's a good idea, but ultimately it's the DAO and not off-chain labs that control the direction and the technical upgradability of the chain. But in terms of, but similarly, the same thing will be the case for every Arbor's Morbid chain. That technology will be available to them and they will have the option to include it in their chain. And just for people who don't know, or as a reminder, Arbitrum Stylus is the next gen upgrade that's coming to the Arbitrum stack that will allow EVM, that will allow developers to write their code not only in EVM languages like Solidity, but also in Rust, C, and C++ to start, and likely other languages to come out to come afterwards. It's WASM based, so really it can support a lot of languages, but to start it'll be C++ and Rust. And to be clear, this is in the same ecosystem. This is fully compatible. This is fully synchronously operatable, which means there can be Rust contracts and, and the Solidity contracts that call one another. And a single application might have pieces written in Rust or pieces written in Solidity, etc. It's a really new development, an exciting development for being more inclusive. One of the one of the values of the Arbitrum Foundation, the Arbitrum DAO and trying in this constitution is technical inclusivity. And that includes things like Bringing, bringing the technology to people rather than asking developers to bend to the Arbitrum technology, bending the Arbitrum stack to developers and making it the most inclusive stack and easiest stack for developers and all types of developers to build on. So that is will be available later this year, but it's up to the Arbitrum DAO whether or not it wants to actually go ahead and include it in, in, in its public chains. And similarly, every all three will have the option to include that technology as well. So yes, it will be available for them. That's super interesting because like right now, Arbitrum, for a lot of people, the sentiment is that it feels like you're just using Ethereum. And then once you add that into it, assuming it's approved by the DAO, it will expand on that feeling and it'll, it can feel like you're coding in a lot of different spaces. It's really the beauty of Stylus is that for a user, it will feel like you're using Ethereum, except maybe things are faster and even faster and cheaper than they already are in Arbitrum. For a developer, that whole world opens up of what they can do, but the user experience ought to be the same because as Steven said, it's written in Stylus, will look and feel from the outside, just like regular contracts. So I guess what would be from an education side, like pros and cons to having something like Stylus approved and into the stack? Yeah, I think the biggest pro is certainly opening up the sort of world of smart con too big sort of opening up the world of smart contract development to much wider set of developers that are currently in the ecosystem and allowing them and allowing people to write code that is much more efficient than EVM code. The biggest con, I would say the biggest con to me is probably, it is fundamentally, I think we've called it EVM plus, which is a great name. Kind of, It's very compatible with the EVM in, in, in terms of as a developer using the system. You can just write your code in Solidity and interact with stylus contracts and you could just ignore the fact that they're not EVM contracts and sort of, it doesn't really, it keeps compatibility in that regard. Nobody really using the system needs to care about the fact that it exists. It feels just like using a standard EVM. But it does, stylus is something that, that kind of Arbitrum supports that will not be 
something that at least the way things look right now would be supported on non-Arbitrum chains. And so it creates sort of the code you write there will be transportable to any Arbitrum chain that has stylus support, but it won't be transferable to other chains. And so it does make your code less generic. But I would say the kind of the upside, I would say, is much bigger than the downside there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And then another thing that comes to mind is, do you see it? playing a role in hackathons in a creative way? Or does, do you think you'll see anything like that? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I think between Orbit and Stylus, like, hackathons, people working on Arbitrum are going to be hopping. Like, <laughs> it is just a crazy amount of new ground for people to explore. And, like, hackathons are obviously an amazing opportunity to dig into weird, meaty, technical guts and build cool things. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some pretty wild innovation at the next few hackathons post stylus, assuming it's approved. By the doubt. And... Even if not, because you'll be able to, once the code is out there and the system is there, you'll be able to launch L3s as a chain supporting stylus True. completely permissionlessly. You got me there. I guess I'm just curious what, out of everything we've talked about, a lot of interesting facets to what the implications of Orbit and L3s and even stylus wrapped into that kind of are. What are your guys' most... What are you most excited about with this advancement? As this is a huge milestone. For me, this really sort this really opens the door for a Cambrian explosion of all kinds of different things that people can build. The combination of permissionless L3s on top of that really solid and mature nitro stack plus stylus, I think just really opens the door. People are gonna try amazing things. And they're going to learn from each other. I expect a really robust community of people working on this stuff. And I'm super excited to see what people come up with. It, it's funny. For the past, I don't know, we, I think we've been, the history is longer, but I think we've been pretty aggressively working on this project for the last, let's say, four and a half, five years. It's There's very much been a kind of, there's a broad vision, but there's been a lot of focus on, okay, what's the next, What's it, what are things going to look like in six months? And I think a, a lot of the things that are happening this week are really, I think, are starting to draw a clearer picture into what are the next 50 years going to look like as this thing kind of stabilizes and expands and grows and kind of change. It's really, it's really amazing to think about the fact that this stuff is now operating on just like a much broader scale than it ever was before yeah i would agree with all that and yeah what i'm i guess most excited about is the innovation that this will that will enable and also the community participation arbitrum has always been about not one team but a community and we've seen the explosive growth in the arbitrum ecosystem and there are sub communities i'll give all the treasure the magic posts on e out there and we have these sub communities with their own subculture and super super excited to see these uh, these communities grow and now there are just more opportunities for the communities to be involved and people can feel like they're not participating to someone else's project they're participating to their own project and choosing the direction of something that they have a say in they have a piece of control in and control of the future and that is true for individuals and that's true for projects as well They'll all have a piece of this, and that's really exciting for me. And it's control of the ecosystem, control of the governance, and control of the core technology. And I would encourage people to really take that seriously and participate. So how can you participate as an individual? If you're a developer, you can go ahead and build, and now you can build an application on Arbitrum 1 or Arbitrum Nova just like always, but you have more opportunities as well. You can actually build an Arbitrum Orbit chain. So please, as the, for developers, try check it out and uh, innovate and let us know what you've built. But again, it doesn't stop at developers and also just community members. You can vote. The Arbitrum airdrop will be live next week on Thursday. And actually take voting with those tokens and voicing your opinion for the future of the Arbitrum ecosystem and Arbitrum technology is key. You'll also be able to delegate your votes, which is a pretty good option too if you don't want to actively vote. And you'll also be able as a community member to go ahead and nominate yourself as a delegate where you want to have a larger voice and really be a representative of others in the community, more active representatives to so go ahead and apply to be a delegate. Those applications are live now in the Arbitrum forums and you can find the links on the, in the governance site to go ahead and submit your application there. 
And but that's just some of the opportunities. And there are more as well. We announced the Arbitral Security Council yesterday, and this will be a twice annually voted on council. So people, community members will have the opportunity to step up. Obviously, there's a set of skills that are required to be in the Security Council, but it will be open for new members of the community to really take increased roles. And we just hope and expect and encourage the DAO to, the DAO to be active and the community to really participate and it's, it's ironic because what we're celebrating here is a celebration where um, the initial developers of Arbitrum give up control. So we're all happy about the fact that we just don't control things and don't have that control. And Arbitrum has become really and truly decentralized. And it might seem ironic, but I can speak for myself personally. That is something that we've been working on from day one to get Arbitrum in the hands of the community. And it's so exciting. And I am extremely excited for the next phase of Arbitrum community where we as a community member like everyone else will watch and see the direction that Arbitrum takes and how the ecosystem continues to grow and flourish in the hands of the community. Absolutely. And by the way, just to throw out a number, because I think it's really cool. There are, as of last night, so I'm sure there's like way more already. There were already a hundred, over like 160 applications from people to become delegates of the system, which is posted on the governance forums, which is pretty amazing. And I should add, actually, for those who are wondering, why is there a one-week delay between the Arbitrum announcement of the token and Arbitrum token launch? As Harry mentioned before, we actually, the Arbitrum Foundation actually went ahead and launched the governance yesterday. So the Security Council and the governance contracts are already in control of the chain. So what is happening for this next week? Why is the token not claimable today? And again, that was in the spirit of openness and fairness and inclusivity. The only reason for the one-week delay is not a technical reason. The smart contracts are there, and actually this one week is just enforced by the smart contract. There's no, there's nothing that anyone needs to do to, to make it claimable in a week. That will just happen based on the smart contracts themselves opening up in one week. So why does this delay exist? And it exists in order for there to be an open and fair process for people to become delegates, because it's important, as have previous airdrops have shown, to build the delegation flow into the claiming flow. What that means is when users go ahead to claim their tokens, those users that don't want to vote themselves will have the option to immediately and during the claiming process appoint delegates. And that's been shown to be one way where community participation is is raised is because there are some users that will do it during the flow, wouldn't otherwise delegate their token. So it's important to have the delegation option during the flow. Then the question is, okay, but if the arbitrary airdrop is announced, the claiming is announced on the same day, how do delegates get into that system? And we could have done something where the Arbitrum Foundation went ahead and asked some individuals in private to, hey, here privately, can you the, the, the token will be launched. Can you be a delegate? But that's not in the spirit of Arbitrum ecosystem. It's not in the ethos of openness and inclusivity that, that the Arbitrum ecosystem is founded on. Instead, the process was chosen to delay one week. And during this week, the point of this week delay is to have give the opportunity for community members, a diverse set of community members, like Harry said, 160 community members have already have already applied in the 24 hours since since this announcement has been made. And we're sure more will come over the course of the next week of the next week to make sure that there's a diverse amount of a diversity of voices represented in governance. And one other thing which I'll mention to this effect, members of the off chain labs team have been instructed not to vote with the tokens that, that they have and they will get. Instead, they are being encouraged to delegate those to the community, to delegate those to community members, to bolster the community voice. And really, that's why it's important to have a strong set of diverse delegates that represent different opinions, hopefully all working in the in, in the pursuit of what's best for Arbitrum. But as a diverse community, people might not always agree. And the best things happen when there's public discourse and conversation to get to the best direction for the ecosystem. And so please go ahead. If you're so inclined, please go ahead and apply to be a delegate. And if and if when it comes to the claiming process, so either vote yourself or if you're not if you're not inclined to do so, put your hands in a delegate that you think will represent the future and the vision that you want to see for the arbitrary ecosystem. That's amazing. There's definitely a lot for people to do and to research <laughs> announcing so many things at once almost feels like into like a giant game expansion that now people have to spend sleepless nights just learning about it and getting involved in the airdrop announcement the DAO, the documents explaining the governance orbit with l3 Im implications l2s being something people can vote in through the DAO. The stylus integrated through all of that, potentially, there's a lot of things here, and that doesn't even scratch the surface. If people want to 
get involved in the conversation around governance, they can already do. I believe it's forum.arbitrum.foundation. And also, Tally announced that the Arbitrum DAO is live on their platform, and you can already register to be a delegate there as well. I'm personally excited to see the implications the Orbit, the Orbit chain technology has on the security scalability and decentralization for the future of Ethereum and Arbitrum as well. Likewise, and thank you everyone for, for tuning in today. And thank you in advance for your continued support of the Arbitrum ecosystem. And hopefully people will take this as an opportunity to just get more involved as an active community member of the DAO. Yeah, and thank you, Stephen, Harry, and Ed, for your time once again. You guys have made yourselves quite available the last few days, and hopefully you can get some rest at some point in the near future. And thank you to the <laughs> Arbitrum oh. Foundation as well, and, and the whole greater Arbitrum community and its uh, contributors. And in about 30 minutes... <laughs> thank you for hosting. Yeah, and in about 30 minutes, you'll also get to tune in as we talk with Nansen as well. Or Nansen, I always say that on Donna. Is it Nansen? Nansen. <laughs> I say Nansen, uh, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited too. Isn't there a Nitro deep dive later today? Oh my God, there's, there's a few. There's a few. What, there's a schedule on our main Twitter, on the main Twitter of Arbitrum. You have Nansen AMA next, and then there's a Nitro deep dive. After that, there's a governance contract deep dive, and then a prism deep dive at the end, which all sound like some big brain stuff. I'm excited. I'm excited for that as well. Yes. And thank you, Eli, for, for hosting. And I know there were those out there that thought that for sure that once the token's uh, announced, there'll be no more AMAs. And here we are with the official AMA day one day later. So <laughs> hope everyone enjoys them. Yeah. Don't worry, Arbitrum. AMA Bitrim will continue on. Zena love. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.